educational purposes. So we get a little leeway that way. But what they need to understand is that copyright is it's not a right, it's a defense. You have to be able to fit into the rules of defending the use. Um, educational material, um, you can use up to 10% of it for a parody or um, review. You know, like the movie critics when they do the review movies, you can use bits and clips and things like that and get away with it without obtaining uh, permission. As a student, those issues aren't likely to affect you. So primarily your concern is going to be making sure that you are not inadvertently failing to cite someone else's ideas or someone else's work. Mm -hmm. It's okay to include a chunk of a book you've read, an article you've read, but you need to properly cite it. And depending on your course, um, the style guide that you use will vary. So if you're in the English courses, it'll be MLA. Mm -hmm. um, History is MLA, Psychology and the Sciences, it's or APA. I don't think we have anybody on campus using Chicago style, so I think it's one of the I two. did it in the history class. In oh, really? Okay. Okay. Oh, and again, and always check the syllabus because Chicago your professor style. may have different, mm -hmm. and you can use the Purdue Online Writing Lab for style guide help. Um, it's totally free, so if you need assistance formatting papers, and that's true whether you're online or on campus. What? I, got to, I use that in English. Easy map, class. yeah. I use that in an English class. Yeah. My Dr. Actus. Yes. He told us to use that. Another one is called Zotero, <coughs> Z O T E R O. You can actually use that to archive um, entire pieces and then it will help you format citations for different things. It's kind of your personal research repository bank. And if you're worried about it, there are plagiarism and checkers out there that you can run your paper through. And some departments, I don't know about English, but some departments, we have a feature in Blackboard called um, SafeAssign. And if they click that, that actually runs your paper through a plagiarism checker. And it spits back a report and tells you, you know, how much they think the report has been plagiarized. Can we use that, or is that just for professors? Uh, the professor has to turn it on. Now, there is another plagiarism checker out there that you can use that you can run your paper through personally. And there's a student resources section I'll show you here in a little bit, and I'll show you how to get to it. So always be sure that you cite, that you footnote, that you do you know, references, pages, whatever format your professor is having you use. Religiously observe that. How copyright affects students the most is because the courses that we design technically are for you. They're not for you to share. You can't take the material in a course and show it to your husband, your spouse, your brother, and you certainly can't take the material in the course, download it, save it, and use it for something else. That's a copyright issue. And so you'll see a lot of courses that have a copyright statement in the top of them that say, you know, this is intended for educational use only for the students enrolled in this course. You are not allowed to copy, share, and or um, reproduce. Okay. Um, there's some more information on plagiarism. A couple comments real quick about netiquette tips for discussion board. Don't use all caps. Online, that's considered shouting. Um, in emails and whatnot to friends from your personal email, you might use emoticons or make smiley faces or whatever with punctuation marks, but you don't do that in a discussion board. You don't do that in an email to your professor. Um, the federal government requires us to have you participate in those discussion boards. A lot of people skip those. That is a chunk out of your grade if you don't do those. And they're easy. You know, your prof is gonna post a question or some kind of a prompt you're gonna to respond to that, and then as your classmates put their responses in, you're gonna to respond to a couple of your classmates' responses. Um, the idea there is that you're learning to have conversations with other people about these academic areas, about this intellectual content, in a professional, reasoned, intellectual way. So don't say, that's a lame statement, you doofus. If you disagree with them, say, interesting point, thank you for that post. I wonder about, I mean, try to phrase it in a, a non-threatening way. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Do you, you may have to subscribe to interact? No. You're already in as a student. When What's you subscribe the... to a discussion board, what that allows it to do is email you every time there's another post in, okay. the, in the board or the thread. I did notice that happened, but I didn't know for sure why I was subscribing. Right. Most faculty on this campus don't use thread subscription. They use board.
board subscription. So they will create a question and you can subscribe to the board. And then anytime any student posts in that board, say, I want to know your opinion on the Democratic, um, um, what they just had, the Democratic debate. And that's your question. Every, when you subscribe, every time a student posts a response, you will get an email letting you know that there's a response. Okay, I didn't know why I was getting that right. horrible. It does sound horrible, <laughs> but if you know that you have not made your comments for that week, maybe you're waiting for one that interests you enough to respond to, then you could you know, go back in and unsubscribe as soon as you've made your post. It's also a very good reminder, oh yeah, I need to do my post. <laughs> I know so. my teacher, we have three posts every week for my own class this semester that we have to do, and she sends out something on Blackboard on, um, I don't know, I think it's auto because I noticed it came on right at midnight several times. That's yeah, nice. she's got like an that, set up for auto. Yeah, yeah. At like uh, Thursday, that's when our first post is due. Um, major projects due before this time. Um, and then Sunday, she even tells us that is really helpful, but not all professors are going to do that, right? So you're going to have to be that self-monitor. Yeah. The second type of discussion board is a threaded discussion board, and this may be a question that's got three parts, such as in the Democratic debate, I want to know how you felt Hillary Clinton done. That's part one. I want to know how you felt who to the Democratic Bernie Sanders. But Bernie Sanders and who. How Mickey Mouse did. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got three different parts. That's three different threads. In that case, you can subscribe to the thread and individually. You can do all three of them or just one of them. So say if you only subscribe to the Hillary Clinton thread, you would only get emails when somebody posts something about in that Hillary Clinton thread. Most faculty on campus do not use a threaded discussion. I think biology is about the only one because it, it takes a question with several components to be a thread of discussion, so I know it's a lot more information than you wanted, but. <laughs> Just don't skip your discussion board posts. Lay those down into your planner. You know, if you've got one due on Thursday, every Thursday on your month needs to say, you know, if it's a history class, history 110, DB1, and that tells you that's your original post. The next, you know, when the next one is due, say your responses are due by Saturday, Saturday needs to say history 110, DB2, DB3. Those are your responses to your peers. Does that make sense? That way you're not forgetting. Um, and depending on how OCD you are, you might want to put little boxes and check them off. Just depends on what sites you up. Yeah, it could be the difference between a B and an A yeah. or even a C and an A in some classes, depending on how they're weighted. Uh, some of our, I know like Diana's history class, is very heavily weighted. And if you don't participate in the discussion boards, you're not going to pass the class. It's the same as skipping class if you're an on-campus student. That's how we judge your last date of attendance for financial aid services. Okay, so this fourth module is basically how to use different tools in Blackboard. Um, creating and using your Blackboard profile, setting up your notification options. Um, you have a way to turn off certain options in Blackboard so that you don't get the emails. I don't recommend this. This is a tool I don't particularly like. I think if the faculty take time to send you a notification, you should get it. But Blackboard gives you the option to turn it off if you want. You can control where it's sent to, whether it's sent to your email or whether it's sent to you by text. A lot of the faculty don't use the text option, so it's kind of redundant to go in and turn it off. They prefer email. Um, let's see, the global navigation. Have all of you have been in Blackboard before, at least for an on-ground class. Okay, so you know that this area up here, this is called the Global Navigation Area. And you have access to the home and to posts and notifications and retention center and calendar. Here's what it looks like. And people. What? It looks like it may be, I think there's I've no grade thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Grade. yeah, I don't have grades because I'm in her faculty, so. She's not a student, yeah. <laughs> so she doesn't have any grades. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what that is, is that global navigation. Good catch, so. Okay, and it talks about how to submit assignments, um, how to use the content editor, how to check your grades, using the discussion board, sending email from within Blackboard, and taking a test online. And then the very last one. Oh, it's just the best practice tips. What I'm going to talk about now are some of the tools and resources in here. And we talked about badges. There's a section in this one called My Progress. 
some faculty on campus are starting to use badges. Um, you may see them a little bit more and more as we move more towards competency-based education. Um, and as you earn competency, business likes to use them a lot for accounting. For instance, um, I'm trying to think of one that they've set up. Um, once you understand the difference for the basic accounting functions, um, and I'll give you a horrible example, because I never could understand the difference between a debit and a credit. It made no sense to me. But you might get a badge for that. And it would be based on you know, your participation or your grades on certain assignments. And so that's what this little progress area is. The discussion board, of course, you may see an individual link for that in your course. The student resources. Um, this is in almost every online course that we create. It may not be in your on-ground courses. But you can ask your instructor to contact us and we will put it in there. Um, you're all enrolled in the student information section and it is in that student information section. And this is very handy because if you come in here, there are more tutorials. There's information about MSSU. If you come in here under student success, there's the Purdue OWL, there's APA, there's plagiarism checker, uh -huh. there's smart thinking. You want to talk about that real quick? Okay. You want to click on that? Oh, it's a video. It's a video. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Okay, so smart thinking is a service that's put together for us by Pearson, which is a company that makes a lot of textbooks. Um, it is 24-7 online tutoring. Distance learning has paid for you to have eight hours a semester for free. If you use them all up and you need more, email me and I will see to it that we update your meter. But there are as many subjects in there as we have courses online. So whatever content areas we have a class in online, there is affiliated tutoring available in Smart Thinking. So everyone that works for the Smart Thinking outfit has a terminal degree in their area, so they're highly qualified tutors. It's not peer tutoring. Um, they're professors or adjunct professors or people who are just experts in their field. There's a, a whiteboard technology for those courses that use quantitative stuff, so math, science, things where you're gonna have diagrams or equations or formulas to work out. You can see that happening on the smart board as your tutor writes or types in information. We save, Smart Thinking saves, an archived copy of all of your tutoring sessions, just like you can get a chat transcript when you're like in a private message chat with Facebook. Um, you can have access to that anytime you want. So if you are kind of fuzzy on what you, you talked about, you can go back and review all of that. A really nice feature of Smart Thinking is they have an online, online writing lab, different than the OWL. The OWL helps you do your writing Smart Thinking, you can submit your essay or your paragraph or your paper for review, and that person will pull it down, your tutor analyzes it, types feedback into it, and then resubmits it back to you so that you can make revisions to your paper. And they're not writing it for you. It's appropriate assistance. <coughs> um, but they're going to give you solid feedback to make your paper better. And if you're using your calendaring system appropriately, you're gonna have a rough draft or a recent, a reasonably finished draft to submit, and you can build in a time, you know, in your time management protocol, where you say submit essay to Smart Thinking. Um, and you're gonna be able to check on there what the availability is, what the, what the time turnaround is. So if they say, well, we need two days to read this, mark it up with revisions and get it back to you. You need to build that in accordingly to your, your time management plan and then leave time for yourself to make those revisions and either resubmit smart to smart thinking for another you know go over or to submit it to your professor. Does that make sense? This is a really awesome awesome system. I thought go you ahead. could only do one paper though. That's not you can do as many as you want. Does anybody have ten o'clock classes they need to okay. Um, okay. feel free to you can you can do your evaluation and then out, but, right. Do you okay. guys have more to share? More Anybody questions? who can say I do, On Smart Thinking, I have one class where it has a bunch of studies, and it just says the study instead of what they're about. On Smart Thinking, will it take you to that study? Like it'll in my social psychology class, she a lot of the things she says, she'll give us a, a sentence and then say it's on this study, and then put the study. On Smart Thinking, would it take you to that study? No. You would have to... If she's not providing it as a clickable link, you can't click on it and go to the study. 
what you have to do is copy the text and go out into Google, so Google and just Google it and search okay. it. Uh, um, the odds are it's out there somewhere. If it's a, a peer review study, you probably can get it through the library by just uh, going into the library and typing the name of the article. All right. Thanks for coming. We appreciate your feedback. Sorry about that. Feel free to email us if you have any questions. So here's your plagiarism checker that we were talking about. It's in here in this section. Um, there's the library link. Uh, stress management, some more study guides, the on-campus tutoring center, and Khan Academy, which is great for math and sciences. What's this under? This is under the student resources section. Okay. And I'm going to show you real quick, if it's not in your course as a link, all of you should have access to... Even if you don't have an online class, you can log in to Blackboard. There may not be classes in there, but you still have access to pieces of information that we put in there for you. All of you should have access to this Blackboard student information site. As long as you are a student at Missouri Southern and enrolled, you will be put into this course, but it's actually an information site. And it has a lot of information in here for you, and it has that student resources. So if you can come in here and click that link and get to that information. And this is a web page that I set up. If you click any of these, you're going to get into the same spot and you just can move around through here. That was under the student success. The digital library has information like Java, QuickTime, and some of the... Uh, and there's your Blackboard browser check. How to set your email up on your phone. Your response Blackboard. And just information on different things that you might need. How to use the Microsoft 365 web apps, that kind of thing. So, what we'll do uh, when I get back, I'll get a few little bugs in his fixed and then I'll put you all in there and you can play. There's three discussion boards in there just to show you how they work. Um, if you've been in an online class, you probably don't need it, but there's one, it's an introduce yourself, there's a QA, and a and then a coffee shop. Um, we won't necessarily be monitoring those, so if you have a question, use the send email function and email one of us, and I put you in there, you're in there too. Oh, great, I see it. Yes. I'd like to, yeah. there's so many resources. Oh, yeah, you need like to, to be in there. More familiar sure. with them. So you, you're welcome to play in the discussion board and post whatever you want, but we won't be checking it regularly. Um, so use the email function within Blackboard and email one of us if you have a question. Do you guys have any more questions? I know we've thrown a lot at you in a short amount of time. Are we so. happy? Are we sad? <laughs> but when you want <laughs> time, we'll leave you in that indefinitely. You can go in there and poke around all you want to, look at the resources and the tutorials and whatever you want. If we have other students, like, you know, if I'm advising with a student, they're talking about taking an online course, yeah. can I contact you guys and yeah, have absolutely. you put them in there? Yeah. Okay, absolutely. absolutely. I think a lot of students probably don't even know that yeah. it's there, but it, there's right so much now, information. Actually, we didn't use it this semester because we're in the, they're moving all of the distance learning around all over the place. Yeah. But in the past, we've taken every online student and put them in there. Okay. That's how we started. If they, started. If they were completely online or just if they had well, any online. Well, when we started, mm -hmm. Every student that was in one or more online classes got enrolled. Yeah. Okay. And then after that, it was every student in one or more online classes that was new. So, okay. I mean, yeah. Banner can tell. We can run a report and tell mm -hmm. who's never had one. So after that, we just if you were a new person in an online class, we put you in there. Okay. In the past, the advisors all monitored and they were the facilitators. Mm -hmm. Since they're all moving over to Acts, a distance learning is going to keep it and we're going to monitor it. Okay. So instead of individuals, I think we're only going to have one, Absolutely. and then we're all going to monitor it. So we're going to make some changes, make it a little bit more self-paced, things like that. But we can always put, put them in. Yeah. Okay. So if I have a student that yeah. Absolutely. Them, it's and it's not, okay. it's not time sensitive. It's, re it's truly an asynchronous orientation program. Yeah. We, and the way it was developed, I mean, Felicia built it so that it looks and feels like an online class. I mean, without the stress of deadlines. So, you know, even even if you're dropped in in the middle of a semester, it's it's not something that you have to stress about. And you're gonna come out of it with a good working knowledge of what an online class feels like, so that when you're actually responsible for academic content and deadlines, you don't have that learning curve of how do I function in an online class, what if I do it wrong? And then we're here to answer questions. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> We'd love to get to the point where we saw this as mandatory for all online yeah. students, but there's several hurdles that would have to be overcome first. You know? Primarily, courses don't open until two days before the right. semester starts. Mm -hmm. You know, and they that needed it earlier than that. Mm -hmm. Some students are still enrolling and don't have their student emails till you know the first week of class. And so, 
Yeah. At this yeah. point, it's strictly voluntary mm -hmm. to participate. So it's free. Mm -hmm. and it's we not do for credit. Survey at the end of yeah. it. You know, if you have suggestions or feedback, you know, I continually make improvements to this based on. Last night I was looking at online courses, I mean classes, mm -hmm. for next semester, mm -hmm. and it just didn't seem like there was just one or two for English or history. So maybe I'm not doing something right. I think there was only one Shakespeare class or yeah. something well, like that. The, the online offerings are not as plentiful as the on-campus offerings, and there are a lot of reasons for that. You but have, yeah, you have certain programs that do not want to take their entire program online, so you, when you get into upper division courses, well, that's what I wondered. there may not be any online. Um, we have programs that can be done entirely online, and so you'll see a lot more of those courses. Well, I didn't online. know that. We have all of our gen eds online. So, you know, basic 100, 200 level courses, but when you get to a lot of the upper divisions, they're not going to be online if they don't want their program online. Unfortunately, English is one of them. They want face-to-face. -face. Um, right now, some of the sciences can't conceptualize an online, so you won't see a lot of chemistry and physics online either. And we don't have every general education class available online, but we have a class for each general education category. So it is possible to complete all of your general education requirements online, although you may not have all of the same choices as an on-campus student. That's correct. That's okay. I understand. Yes. <laughs> we share one brain between the two of us. <laughs> That's why we travel in a pair. <laughs> External That's merger. Good. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to email us or contact Distance Learning. Our emails will be in that training course that I dropped. Or Dory can give them to us. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that and training course will say Project Stay at the beginning of it, so figure out. Oh, okay. So that will be yeah. easy to spot. Okay. It's just right. after 10, so we'll turn it okay. over to you. All right. Well, you guys um, just leave your evaluations for me. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It was our pleasure.